welcome to each and every one of you today. I uh, see there's a few uh, family members that uh, arrived here and visit uh, us today. Welcome. We hope that you all uh, have a good time with us, especially uh, we have old South African friends here with us today. They uh, live in Portland, Oregon. So Luan, Karika and the kids, very warm welcome to you. So somewhere in the service, I have to switch over to Afrikaans. So uh, you just say Google Translator, it will help you very fast. Uh, and then you can uh, understand what we say. Well, what I will promise is that we will not gossip. Is that the deal? I have a little something on the heart that I just want to share. Um, I just feel it appropriate to say tonight from Faith Circle side that we are very thankful to be here tonight. And I think for, for Megan and Megan and myself, you, Zion is a fairly new church family for us. And as Faith Circle, we are also fairly new as a circle in the church. So tonight, this is our way to say thank you. This is our message of hope that we, the consistory, want to convey to you, the congregation. The, the message is entitled, Stand Firm. But we ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord, because God chose you as first fruits to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. He called you to this through our gospel, that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm. Hold fast to the teachings we pass on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. I want you to focus tonight on count your faithful blessings. And let us read now together from uh, the Word of God, the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, from verse 1 to 15. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God of, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For He chose us in Him, before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in His sight. In love, He predestined us from adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with His pleasure and will, to the praise of His glorious grace, which He has freely given us in the one He loves. In Him, we have redemption through His blood, 
the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that He lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, He made known to us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure, which He purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the time reached their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In Him we are also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of Him, who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of His will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of His glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in Him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of of his glory. It's Thanksgiving. It's a time where we usually tell each other how blessed we are. It's usually the time where we tell each other, count your blessings, count them one by one. This is usually the time in the United States where families and friends get together around the table and just have fun and just share the stories of their own lives. This is family time. This is a time where the nation in the United States get together and say, under one God we stand and we praise His name. We count our blessings. The interesting thing is, for many of us this year, thanksgiving is not coming naturally. To say thanks, to praise the name of God and say, God, thank you for all the blessings. For some of us, it is not that easy this year. It's not that natural way of just saying, thank you, Lord, for all my blessings. This might sound a little bit harsh. You say, how can we say these things? If you ask me what I want to do for the next month or two, I want to go to the basement and hibernate or just call it a sabbatical and someone have to phone me on the 1st of January and say, the year is over, the COVID is over, we can just go on. I think most of us feel the same way. If we look around tonight, we miss each other. It's a totally different year. Brothers and sisters, there's something that I want you to realize tonight, to think of tonight, and that's the fact, even with everything that went the wrong way this year, for the whole world, for families, for individuals, for companies, for churches, there is still blessings that we can count. And if we listen to this passage in the letter to the Ephesians, it is very clear that Paul is teaching us a different way of thinking of the way we think of blessings. A different perspective on blessings. Paul is actually saying the following. He said there is an upward form of blessings and there is an outward form of blessings. Upwards, what does that mean? If you look at this, Ephesians 1, it's actually a really good summary of who we are as Christians in Jesus Christ. In this one passage, Paul is really putting everything in this to remind those members, those followers of that congregation at that time to say, who are you in Christ Jesus? And think about it. 
if we listen to this and we understand the way that Paul is thinking to say that blessings can only be visible if we look upwards and then at the last moment we look to each other and around us. Paul say, even in tough times, I look up and I see the blessings, and this is my faithful blessings. What is faithful blessings? Faithful blessings is something that no one can take away from you. Not a COVID-19. Not anyone in the world can take these blessings away from you. And what is this upwards blessings that Paul is talking about? So let, uh, let me tell you what happened. There was a day in history, a day where the world was actually doomed, a time where there was no hope, because sin was just taking over the whole world. There was no hope after death. It was just actually a disaster waiting to happen. And then something happened. Because God loved us, and because God takes care of His children, God did something amazing. Something that we still not really can understand up till today. God said, you know what I will do? I will bless you with my Son, Jesus Christ. Listen to this. I will bless you with my Son, Jesus Christ. And He will come to this world and He will carry this burden. And He will save you. And now this is where I want you to stop. Stop thinking about anything else. Think of what it means when I say, Jesus saved you. The biggest faithful blessing that you and I can receive. The biggest blessing ever ever. The world around us can go down. Everything can go the wrong way earthly if I say with the things that I own, with my work, with my health, whatever it is, things can go the wrong way, but there's something that can never be taken away from us. And that's the blessing of the Son, Jesus Christ. If you read John, John say, what is your identity in these times? Your identity is that you are a child of God. And if you are a child of God, how blessed can you be? It's the biggest blessing that you can have. We say this over and over. We share it with each other. But do we really understand and believe in this? Brothers and sisters, count your faithful blessings. Some of us will find it hard this year to say, it's not that natural for me to say, count your blessings. It's not natural or it doesn't come easy to me to say, thank you, God. Some of us went through tough times. Some families lost a father. Some families lost a mother. Some families lost their children. Some people lost their jobs. I visited the care center yesterday and I realized how hard it was for the people in the care center from March up to now more or less just isolated all by themselves, did not have the opportunity to have a conversation face to face with their children. How hard must that be? How easy was that to say, thank you Lord for my blessings? I did not even see my children this year. Some of us say that. And before we crucify them or stone them, just try to understand this year. And if you can get to that point to understand, then we get to the second part of Paul's message to say, now we turn around. Now it's the outward perspective of blessings. If we can understand the biggest blessing It's the Son, Jesus Christ, that saved us from this world, that saved us from sin. Now we can turn around and now we can share this hope to the world. Now we can go to this 
this world of us, this family member, this friend, this colleague, and say, listen, there's hope. And Paul is thinking, not only of today when he is talking about this. Paul likes to say, if we count blessings, if we think about our lives, we cannot forget about the past. We have to live in the present. We have to take what is going on in our lives right now and still have hope for the future. It's more or less how the prophets in the Old Testament and even today have to think. Let us go back to the Word of God. Let us see in hard times God was there. He took care of us. And then let us see what's happening around us. Let us go now and do that outward projection and go and share the message of hope. My dear brother and sister, what is the biggest blessing that you can share with each other this year? The message of hope. The message that Jesus is alive. The message that Jesus is our Savior. That Jesus is our hope. Sometimes I think it's very easy with thanksgiving to just share stories. To make this good, juicy sermon, if I can call that. It's very easy to do that. But I realized in my own life this year, if I look around, there's people lying around. People that have pain. People that, that cannot just share the joy of this world. People that is here tonight. Or ever, whoever listened to this. That maybe say, my husband is not here anymore. My wife is not here. My child is not here. But guess what? If we focus on the upwards blessings... We will see God. We will experience God. And even in the darkest hour, we will be able to share hope. The hope of Jesus Christ. May this year be that time when you really look up first and say, Thank you, Lord, for my faithful blessings. I am saved. I am free from sin. Because of that. I have a future of hope. Let's share the message of hope this year. Because this is what we need. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, when we start this prayer tonight, we can say a lot of things. And yes, Lord, we can look around and say, thank you. Thank you that you blessed me financially. Thank you that you blessed me with a good health. Thank you that you blessed me with a good family, with a good job. Thank you that you blessed me with so many opportunities in life. But if there is a time in our history, in our life, that we can think differently about blessing. It is this year, Lord. Because we see how fragile is the world around us. We see how easily things can go the wrong way. But there's something that cannot take our faithful blessings away. Not the world, not anything, not even death. And that's Jesus Christ, our Lord. No one can take our faith away from us. No one can take our freedom in Jesus Christ away. And Lord, Paul teaches us that this is just a temporary home. A tent where the tent poles can just easily be removed and our tents collapse. And then, Lord, what happened? 
if we did not believe. Lord, this is why we want to focus on our permanent home, your kingdom. Heaven that is prepared for all of us who believe in Jesus Christ. And that's our faithful blessings that we have to focus on. Not only for this year, but for all the years that is coming. Help us to understand this teaching of Paul that we have to take this upward blessings from you, God, your Son, Jesus Christ, that saved us. And then the outward message, the movement to turn around and say, we have hope. Hope that no one can take away from us. The hope in Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for Bezeda. We pray for all the other families that's going through a tough time now. We pray that you will take care of them. Bless us as families over this Thanksgiving. Bless us as a church. And help us that we will remind each other of your presence. When we say thank you for all our blessings, let us start by saying thank you for being saved. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, while Luan is coming to the front, I realized what is the meaning of the message of Paul. Yesterday when I visited Bezeda Q, and you know she really got a good sense of humor. She was not able to talk to me. She was just lying there. And there was a time that I say, Bezeda, but you can just nod your head. Do you know that Jesus loves you? You know what Bezeda Q did? She nodded her head. That is faithful blessings. Lying on that bed to know not money, not power, not a title can change my life right now. It doesn't have any meaning. But the fact that I know Jesus Christ, she nod her head. And that's my faithful blessing. And for that, let us listen to Luan when he sings. For that, let us raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies, I raise a hallelujah, louder than the unbelief, and I raise a hallelujah, my weapon is a melody, and I raise a hallelujah. to fight for me and I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive I raise a hallelujah Everything inside of me, I raise a hallelujah. Fear you've lost your hold on me. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. And I raise a sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated my king is alive I sing a little louder in the presence of my enemies sing a little louder Louder than the unbelief, sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody, sing a little louder. Heaven come.
comes to fight for me And I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The king is alive I raise a hallelujah I raise a hallelujah Hallelujah, louder than the unbelief. Praise the Hallelujah.